and we're back on the roof so i was over here doing a pm and i noticed that this outdoor fan wasn't running compressor was but uh um something's up with that fan it should be running because uh, i don't think it was in defrost so we're gonna go ahead and look into this and see what's going on so here we go <laughs> First, we're gonna go ahead and jump it out just to get it going, and we'll show you what it's doing. So, yeah, you can see the fans are coming on. I hear terrible noise. So, first things first, we want to make sure that defrost board's good. So, um, we're gonna, you see that relay right there? That's what controls the fan now. It looks like this one is a normally closed, so it actually is always closed. All right, so if we're looking at our schematic here, we have our ODM, our outdoor fan motor. So that black wire goes into our uh, defrost board and then runs over to the line side of our contactor line two. And then we have a brown wire which goes to the capacitor and then we have a purple wire which jumps off the uh, common terminal of the capacitor and runs to line two or the terminal of line two on the contactor which means the motor is energized by the contactor itself so this is always closed so um, let's make sure it's closed we'll go from there all right, so even though the power's off, I should be getting continuity because when it's not powered, it's closed. It's powered uh, to open. So you can hear that we have continuity and we don't have crazy resistance or anything. So the next thing we need to do is we need to verify we have voltage going uh, to it. So COM is coming from our line. And this is going to the motor. So we'll go ahead and plug that back in there. <laughs> And we're going to make sure we got power coming out of this wire here. Go from there. So we have that to ground. So we should be getting like 120 volts. So we have voltage. So now we got to find out why the fan's not coming on. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and find the capacitor and check that. Okay, so we got all the wires off. So it's a 60 for the compressor. That's good. And a seven and a half for the fan so it's good so i would say the motor's toast all right so i'm just oming this out just why not um so this is this purple wire is our run wire so i'm just going to ground so we got nothing that's good and then this brown wire this is going to be our start winding and stick that in there and i'm also going to go to ground good now if it was grounded it probably would have Pull, uh, pop the fuse for the breaker um, so we're just doing our due diligence here just to make sure because sometimes you can get uh, mega ohms on it so yeah we got nothing there so that's our common by the way so we're gonna go uh, common to run and we got 22.5 and we go common to start. Oops. And we got 36. So 36, 46, 56. So right around 60-ish, probably. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this and go start to run. And we should be getting right around 60-ish. Uh, plus or minus, and it could be below 60. Technically, on paper, that's supposed to add up exactly, but it never does. <laughs> yeah, 59. Yeah, 58, 59. So, yeah, uh, windings test out. Okay, let's spin it and see if it spins. All right, we're going to try to spin it and see if there's any kind of resistance. Yeah, it seems to be okay. Yeah, so the motor might have just fried. All right, so we're going to get an inrush. Let's see if it pulls any apps, and we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, that motor's dead for it. Or, it's done for. Yeah, it's dead. 
All right, so now we need to disable that. We don't want the compressor to run because it's not gonna do anything, so. Nice easy way to do that is just to disconnect the Y and go from there. Uh, that way they'll at least just run in emergency heat. So we'll have to go ahead and order up a motor. Um, I could do a universal, um, but this property, they're actually like really good about wanting um, OEM stuff. So I'm gonna call them and see what they wanna do first. Uh, otherwise we'll put it in the universal because I think I might have this one. This one's a quarter horse, uh, quarter horse 825. Um, RPMs so yeah so anyway let's get that fixed we're gonna go ahead and get our motor out of there that's our new one and let's get our install the train made it nice and easy they got these uh, connectors right here so you just unhook your wires here um, that's the compressor so that's cool because I thought I was gonna have to deal with all that that's where the dual run cap is that's brand new so we're good to go on that we got our OEM motor so we're gonna go ahead and move this. All right, so we're gonna pop these off. We're gonna go ahead and uh, take this off. You just twist that, slide right up. You might have to do one wire at a time just because the ends are so big. Or you can just chop them off, whatever. Okay, so now we need to get this fan blade off. All right, so we're gonna use our fan puller to get this off. So we'll do that. We need to get our, our set screw off first. And a lot of people say that this is a nice to have, but I find it a must have because when, you cut, when you're changing out condenser fan motors or even blower motors, if you can't get it off, you're in for a whole lot of hurt. So I highly recommend getting one of these. I have this in my Amazon store. If you're interested, go ahead and click on the link below. Uh, also, I'll have a little tag on this, this little guy here if you want to pick it up. This is the best, best money you can spend, I'll tell you that. Definitely a uh, quality of life tool. <laughs> So we got our fan blade taken off. Now we just need to go ahead and remove our hub puller here. Now we need to remove the motor from the cage and then we can install our new one. And it looks like it's quarter inch screws holding this on. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out and put it on the floor. Okay, motor is removed. All right, we got that screwed in there. Now we need to put the fan blade back on. All right, so now we got everything assembled. We just need to go ahead and reinstall it. All right, so we need to route these cables through this hole here. Then we also have to route it into that compressor compartment as well. So we route those through this hole right here. All right, cool. So we got it all put back together. We're gonna go ahead and wire it up. And one thing is, in this case, they made them pretty easy to do. My only problem with this, uh, it's actually, I don't have a problem with this. It's just, it sucks because the new motor doesn't have the plastic sleeved uh, spades like the old one. So there will be some exposed metal. So I'm gonna cut these off and put my own on just to prevent any possibilities of shorts. All right, we got our, everything all wired up. So we're gonna put the panels back on. We're gonna reconnect the compressor. Call. We're gonna call for cool, call for heat, make sure it's working, and then we will get out of here. So anyway, we got her all back up and running. Uh, fan spinning in the correct direction. She's currently in heat mode. Got some nice cool air coming out of there. Uh, we've cycled cooling mode and she worked fine. So anyway, that's how you diagnose a bad outdoor fan motor on a heat pump. So hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you like the tools I use, make sure you visit my Amazon store and buy them there. Thanks for watching.